Welcome. Hello. Nice car, Italian, right? It is, yeah. yeah. Lamborghini. Listed one? Yeah, so it has like Let's extra ground clearance and all terrain tires. Damn, bro. <laughs> the Huracan's clean. <laughs> they just put Lambo on the <laughs> on the food label. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. I don't have a cup holder. I just realized that. Now because the Huracan Storado does not have remote start, this is how you'll be starting your day, walking out your driveway to find your Storado parked there. And uh, at least in the case of my neighborhood, it doesn't quite fit in. Before we get behind the wheel, I want to look at it dimensionally in this driveway, which is what I want to estimate is a normal size driveway. And I've got it parked all the way over to the left hand side even with the tire, the front tire hanging off just a touch. And then my wife is reviewing this Mazda CX-50 over here. This one is also all the way over to the right. That does leave us enough room to get a stroller through here. But if you didn't have them parked all the way to the sides, it would be tight as we'll see when I open up the driver door. Another thing to point out, there's this gutter here that I usually have the curb ramps for to negotiate this deep recess, but I won't need them in the Storado, which is why I've got it parked over here to the right-hand side. That extra ground clearance buys you that. Once again, I do have to hit the unlock button instead of having smart keyless entry. And then, oh, my tired morning joints don't wanna duck down. Hello, cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this drive in the Huracan Storado for a what it's like to live with drive review. I don't really have a spot to put this key fob, I guess in my jacket, or this is a phone holder that is optional and way too expensive, but I'm just gonna use that for the key fob slot. And then to start up the vehicle, I'll lift up on my missile launcher slash engine start and tap that button. Now that is a true and proper cold start, yet 5.2 liter V10, that doesn't sound that crazy. Let's hear it from the outside. In the Strata drive mode, I don't see that disturbing many people in your neighborhood. It is a low frequency, so it might rattle some dishes nearby, but it's certainly not loud. And then to go into first gear, we just pull on the right paddle and then I'll let down the e-brake. And as we'll see, we're going to clear that gap no problem at all. Hello, neighbor. Just a typical day in a 373,000 S tested Lamborghini Huracan Storado. Let's do the world famous horn test. Ooh, and then it killed the engine with the start-stop system. That is a sharp note. What about the turn signal sound? I just love having turn signals on the wheel, by the way. Everything you need right here. Also kind of a loud signal. That's surprising to me. Now this seems like a good spot for a turning radius test. So let me crank the wheel. And pivot us around in what is not an amazing turning radius, but it's livable. All wheel drive is gonna have the front tires being pushed a little bit further than just a rear drive version of this vehicle, especially some of the rear drive Huracans that have rear wheel steering. This doesn't have that either. I was also thinking it might be fun to give you an example of parallel parking in the Storado. So I'm gonna try to squeeze in between these trash cans and that vehicle back there that should be easier then between two cars, admittedly, pull up on the what looks like an ejector handle to go into reverse, and that brings up a backup camera that is a decent resolution in the gauge cluster here. And of course, you can't see anything out of the rear view mirror, so you're just relying on that. And I didn't demonstrate what it'd be like to back the Huracan Storado out of your driveway, but this would kind of be the example. You're really relying on those cameras. And because of how flared out the fenders are, 
your rear view mirror isn't all that helpful, or your side mirrors aren't all that helpful either. I think I did a decent job. I'm probably within just a couple inches, but let's go see how I actually did. Yeah, really, honestly, for a single shot, not bad at all. Again, would be harder with two cars that I had to squeeze in between, not just trash cans. And here's another thing to point out. Okay, so I am parked next to this curb, right? If you're dealing with most supercars, I wouldn't be able to open the door because it would scrape against it. But in the Storato, I actually have a couple inches of clearance here that I could make it over the grass and over that curb. So you're not worried about scraping doors. That's handy. And before we get back moving, there is one last backup camera related issue. And that is that every time you turn the wheel, it bisects the view. So you are kind of limited to just the parking sensors and to your door mirrors. Among other visibility related concerns you might have in this vehicle, there's a stoplight in front of me. I can't see there's a stoplight, I just know there is one because when I duck down like this, I can actually see that the light has now turned green. If I'm sitting upright, I have no view of that whatsoever because you're staring at a letterbox here. To return to some data points for this vehicle, I mentioned it has a 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10. It is paired with a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox and sends that power to all four tires permanently. What I did not share with you is that it makes 601 horsepower and 413, again, I'm just finding myself just doing it naturally, 413 pound-feet of torque. So the power output is down 29 to the rear drive Lamborghini Huracan Technica. It's still plenty of momentum and with a naturally aspirated motor, the power delivery is just so nicely linear. And the braking feel, With these carbon ceramics, no issues whatsoever. I'm also not hearing any squealing from those, and I can easily modulate the pedal and come up to a relatively smooth stop, and the dual clutch is not all that clunky here in Strata drive mode. In sport, it kind of emphasizes the shunking that happens in the gearbox, but it's just kind of part of the theater. Now, I recognize that commuting in a Storato is probably not going to be the condition for many owners who, if they have this kind of money, have a variety of vehicles, including an S-Class or 7 Series to get them comfortably to and from work, but let's just say you did. You'd want some level of comfort day in and day out. And these sports seats, despite their aggressive look, are decently comfortable in their shape. The padding is on the firm side, so your butt or back might start to ache after half hour, 45 minutes to an hour behind the wheel. So if your commute is that long, this could get old. In terms of ride comfort, this vehicle is shockingly good because you have the steel springs and hydraulic dampers, but in addition to that, you have this extra tire sidewall with these all-terrains that kind of just cushions you more than a standard Lamborghini from road imperfections. And so I've been astonished with how livable and how enjoyable this vehicle is to just kind of putz around where the regular Huracan, my back is really just upset very quickly. And now we're in the highway portion of our commute. So I'm gonna quiet up and we're gonna listen for the volume level inside this cabin. Yeah, at, at these speeds, the wind noise is considerable. You can hear it pounding off of those crossbars for one, and it's right here at the seams of the door. The tire noise isn't all that bad. I expected worse from all terrains. And you can definitely hear cars passing by you. We don't get a lot of that V10 noise here in the Strata drive mode, which might be what some people want in this kind of setting. If you wanted to hear more from it, you could also go into sport. That's gonna open up the baffles and the exhaust, give you some more aggressive shifts. <laughs> and that characteristic Huracan noise. With the burbles of overrun that you love, even in sport, it's pretty readily upshifting to the seventh gear. But then if you need the passing power, you don't have to pull the paddles. You 
just put your foot down and that's there for you. Now, as I just changed lanes there, I'm noting that I don't have blind spot monitoring, so I am peering over and using these rear side windows to help a little bit. And they do help somewhat, they're not useless, but I would have appreciated blind spot monitoring. I'm in the fast lane here. You can downshift quickly without having to enter the manual mode fully and feel just that swell of V10 power, naturally aspirated V10 power kick up. <laughs> you won't have any issues spotting an opening in traffic and getting there. And heck, you might give your fellow commuters a little bit of an auditory thrill. It does make the commute more exciting, more enjoyable. I'll say that. <laughs> Why do you have such a smile on your face, Miles? You just got to your job. Well, the way there was good. <laughs> and now that you've arrived at work, you're going to be locking it up and on your way into the office doing more than a few backwards glances. See you soon. Oh, it's time for lunch. And you are going to skip the taco truck because you actually just missed it. And get something else. Now, I should spend a second talking about what it's like to get in and out of this car. And I mentioned in my own driveway that even with a good amount of space between cars, the door swings so wide and it doesn't give you all that large of an access point that this giant space is eaten up really quickly. Now, the Storato is an extra 1.7 inches higher than the regular Huracan, and so that means that when I'm putting my foot in here, when I duck down, I don't have to bend my knee quite as far for my butt to now sit on the sill. The sill is a little bit wider because this vehicle is, I think, 1.3 inches wider than a regular Huracan, and so that means that I do have to stick my foot further into the vehicle but it's a little bit better. The door opening, however, is not any larger. And so this is me at six feet tall. I'm staring at the roof rails. So I have to duck my head really far down to actually get inside. And now closing up the door. That's a really solid thud, but not the best noise this car can make. It's that one. How do you not start up this car and just smile or giggle a little bit? You feel so cool. And the interior helps that. Completely suede wrapped here as an option in this Storato, which feels so race car, but the problem is that practically it's tougher to keep clean than the leather that's just on the borders of these seats. Suede just captures all the oils from your fingers, so everything you touch is like that. And crumbs too, crumbs just stick around. They also stick around or really anything from the road surface on this grip tape lined aluminum floor mat. It's an option and it's more low profile than carpeting, so you have more footwell space. But yeah, just cleaning that, you need a scrub brush or maybe that's not your problem. Maybe that's your detailer's problem. It's time for lunch and I'm thinking chicken. Chicken sounds good. So we're gonna hit up this Chick-fil-A drive-through. Is that what Lamborghini owners eat? I have no idea, but it's what I'm eating today. The window controls are not here on the door. They are here with these toggles, which are so cool to operate. That's right, push down to slide open that window. And now the visibility on the front, it is a protruding snout, so I wanna be careful. But I think I got it. I think the spicy chicken sandwich sounds good. The meal would just by itself. The meal would be great. And for the drink? For the drink, I'll have an unsweetened iced tea. Any sauce? Yes, please. The uh, Chick fil A sauce and the barbecue sauce. Are you all set? Thank you. Did I panic order? I'm going to like the spicy chicken sandwich, but unsweetened iced tea. 
Is that okay? It's my turn for some food. Hi, welcome. Hello. Nice car, Italian, right? It is, yeah. yeah. Lamborghini. It's a it's an interesting one. It's like a lifted Huracan. It's a lifted one? Yeah, so it has like Let's extra ground clearance and all terrain tires and other fun stuff like that. Are you like recording now? I am, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just, I'm doing like a day in the life kind of thing. Yeah, you'll see yourself in the video. You'll see uh, me going through Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Damn, bro. The Huracan's clean. Yeah. Is this your only car? Uh, this isn't mine. I'm just reviewing oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> they just put Lambo on the <laughs> on the food label. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. Thank you. You guys have a good day. You too. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have a cup holder. I just realized that. Where am I going to put this stuff? Okay, that goes there. And this this goes here. Don't spill. I don't want one of those days. I decided I wasn't going to eat lunch at my desk. And so here at the back of the Huracan Storado, I do have a little area where I can lay out my food. It's not as good as the wing of like a 911 GT3, but it'll do. Ah. <sighs> I'm now fully satiated, but I still have a few extra minutes on my lunch break, so let's just talk about how this Dorado looks. This Mad Max vehicle with these tacked on fender flares and the louvered engine cover and a roof scoop. Why would you need a roof scoop? Okay, well, if you're going to take this Dorado off road, you'll be creating a cloud of dust and the air is cleaner up high. So the roof scoop is going to suck in that cleaner air and take it to the engine. You also have these roof rails and crossbars. The crossbars are optional. And I realize that's kind of a trend to also put the, uh, the cargo carriers, the external cargo carriers on supercars and Audi RS6s and such. But this is here from the factory. And that's a question I've now received a few different times. I cut out one of them from the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. But they were like, did you customize this? And I go, no, this is here. All this stuff is from the factory, including these LED driving lights for all the rally crossing you're gonna do at night, I guess. And of course the lift and the width and the all-terrain dueler tires and the standard carbon ceramic brakes and red painted calipers. It just is an exceptional vehicle amidst the norm that you're gonna see. And so if you buy one of these, hopefully you got giddy when you first saw it and that's what made you buy it. And you're going to need to channel that into some patience with all the different questions you're gonna get from people. You won't be able to go anywhere without at least someone stopping you to ask about the car. Oh, and now, let's get back to work. I made it through the work day, yes! Now to celebrate, I wanna do a zero to 60 run in this Dorado. Let's just say I brought my race box with me and I found a stoplight and I was gonna maybe go into the rally drive mode and I was going to hold this button to make sure there's no traction control. And then I was going to do a thrust mode. All right, it's time. There's <laughs> 60 in 3.26 seconds. Oh, that spices up your day. <laughs> All right, the grocery run is done. I've got my thinly sliced beef for the Pad Thai CU that we'll be making tonight. Ooh, 458, look at you. And I've done the supercar thing. I parked away from everyone I possibly could. And now I'm going to pop the front trunk. It's like supercar day today. Oh, and find that the front trunk is filled with all these other things that were left in the Storado. But if these things weren't here, then I'd have three and a half cubic feet of space, but I wouldn't put the beef in there. I'll tell you why, because all the cooling systems make this area so stinking hot when you're driving that anything that is perishable would no doubt perish on your journey to your destination. So instead, you might think, oh, well, I'll stick it behind the front two seats. Well, in this case, we have the optional fire extinguisher taking up room on the passenger, on the passenger side. And depending on how tall you are, you won't have a whole lot of room behind the driver's seat. So it's just gonna go right here in the passenger seat. And if you have a passenger, then they're holding your beef. That's fine, right? I can say that. Now, with great power comes great fuel consumption. 
But thankfully, in the case of the Dorado, it's actually not as bad as you might think. So over the last 240 miles of this trip, we've been averaging 15.8 miles per gallon. That's actually better than the EPA rated 15 miles per gallon flat that this gets combined from 13 city and 18 highway. And with the 21 gallon fuel tank, even if it was 15 miles per gallon flat, you'd get 315 miles on a single tank. And at current fuel prices of around 550 for Supreme or premium fuel, uh, you're looking at 115 bucks or so for a single fill up. Oh, yeah, I mentioned the complications of getting in with the door you know, being kind of thick and opening wide and the sill being wide, but actually it's, it's much worse getting out because where you can exit from your knee goes right into the door here is here and this bolster happens to be in the way. So uh, you hardly ever uh, get out looking cool, but at least the car makes up for it. Ooh, now there's some eye candy, H1 Hummer pickup truck. What's a better daily driver? That or this? You let me know what you think in the comments. And speaking of daily driving, that is clearly what I'm focusing on in this video. We're not gonna be showing you what it's like to rally cross this Storado in this video, but I did do a first drive in this car where I romped on it on both a road and rally cross stage. So if you wanna see what that's like, I will make sure that the video is linked in a card somewhere around here and you should go check it out. I'm also not going to show you in this video what it's like to drive the Storado at night. I may do a standalone night drive, but I'm really kind of thinking through this new format, this day in the life format as a separation from my typical night drives and separate from my typical drive reviews. So my question is, should I put a night drive segment in these day in the life videos? Please comment and let me know because I'm, I'm still developing this. I'm taking feedback and integrating it as best I can. But for now, let me attempt to summarize my thoughts on what it's like to live with a Storado in the context of a daily driver. And that is to say one very careful statement. This is astonishingly livable, this car. If not for the Urus, this would be the most easy to live with Lamborghini, period. And though I don't expect many Lamborghini owners, if any, to daily drive this car, the fact of the matter is, you could. It rides so nicely, those all-terrain tires actually give it that extra bit of squish when you're riding about town. This 5.2 V10 is so easy to use in Strata drive mode and the gearbox isn't lurchy. It has the necessities like Apple CarPlay, though it isn't wireless and your USBs are back here and the USB A's, not USB C's. That extra ground clearance makes it easier to get in and out of than a standard Huracan. It sounds amazing, but at the right times, not when you're starting it up in your neighborhood, you're not gonna disrupt anyone. It's relatively mellow, but then of course, you can go into sport, and of course, you can downshift a couple gears and make that NAV10 howl that we've come to expect from Lamborghini. And then you go into Strata and you come right back down to reality. And then there's the look. It is so very cool, but in a different way than a regular Huracan. It makes you feel more unique than that car. It gets different attention. And now I'm gonna get into the things that are less than desirable, but this first one could go either way. It just depends on you as a person. It is a conversation starter, this car. As I said, there's nowhere you can go where someone isn't gonna wanna ask you some questions about it. But if you like that, if you like sharing enthusiasm about cars, like I certainly do, then you'll look forward to those opportunities and you will give people some grace when they have unending questions. If you are not, if you're a more introverted person, then all the attention this car is gonna get is gonna really be a turnoff for you. One sort of universal turnoff is the lack of visibility and lack of driving aids like blind spot monitoring. The letterbox out the front means you're constantly having to duck your head forward to see stoplights. And you of course have the louvers over the engine bay, meaning you can't see anything out of the rear view mirror. As I experienced with the grocery test, cargo space is really bad. And if you did want to use that front trunk, then you can't put any perishables in there because they would just overheat. 
NSX, very nice. And then the last thing, and it really isn't that bad, is of course the fuel economy. A V10 engine is going to consume fuel, but 15.8 MPG as I've been seeing it, is pretty great, over 300 miles on a single tank in a supercar. Nothing to get all that upset about. What I have found myself a little upset about is the lack of cup holders. Like, how do you not have cup holders? Even the Miata found a way to have the detachable cup holders from the side. Why couldn't Lamborghini figure out something to work on for that situation? The other interior stash spots are minimal, but would be workable if I at least had a darn cup holder. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV, what it's like to live with drive review. If you want to see more vehicles done in this format, let me know in the comments. If you did like it, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time.